Good morning, church family and ministry friends. I'm Pastor Stephen Brooks. Welcome today to our online, internet, around the world church service. And I'm so happy that you're here today because God's Word is going to build you up to do all that He's called you to do. And God's Word is also building you up so that you become the person that God wants you to be. Praise the Lord. Please take your Bibles and meet me today in the book of Isaiah. Let's go to chapter 55, and I would like for us to look at verse 9. We're going to receive the tithes and the offerings. We're going to honor the Lord, and we're going to bring them into the storehouse of the Lord. Now, verse 9, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Praise God. Now, let's take a look at one of those thoughts of God. This is found in Proverbs chapter 4. We looked at this verse last week. I want you to get this into your spirit. Proverbs 4, 18. Verse number 18. But the path of the just, that's you. So this is your path. This is the way that God wants you to walk. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. Praise God. This year will conclude as being the best year that you've ever had thus far in your life. Now, if you believe the Word of God, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, say amen. Praise God. I'm not saying for many of you that you don't have challenges and that there aren't uh, certain things that would oppose your brighter day. But as you continue to work the word and practice the covenant, those things must give way and you will see that God's word is true, that things are shining ever brighter unto the perfect day. That, my friends, is the path that you are on. You are not on a path where you take two steps forward and one back. No, you are moving forward, and the enemy, even with his best efforts, cannot stop your progress concerning God's will and plan for your life, which is always getting brighter and better all the time. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to say that tithing is a covenant of the kingdom that launches the believer into these various realms of wonderful financial prosperity. But tithing is the covenant of the kingdom. It's a covenant. Well, Pastor Stephen, you often say that. What do you mean by that? Well, primarily what I mean is that God's financial plan for your life is not a promise. And some of you really need to come to terms with that because you just think that because you're a Christian and you love Jesus and you've given your heart to God, that somehow finances just flow along with that, but it doesn't work that way in the area of finances. Now, you, of course, as a believer, have a covenant of salvation, but what you want to do is you want to connect with God also in the area of a covenant with God through finances. And that's different. From the salvation experience. You can be saved, born again, and go to heaven, and never the entire time you're on planet, on planet earth ever give God one penny. See, you're saved by grace through faith. And you could be born again and love Jesus and sing songs to the Lord and have wonderful prayer times and live your remaining years on earth and never give God a penny. You're not saved because of your giving. But if you want to experience God's best for your finances, then that's why you want to get connected with God with a financial covenant. And that's what tithing does. Tithing is a covenant of the kingdom that launches the believer into these various realms of financial prosperity. Now, let me also say this. Tithing is a kingdom mystery that gives you mastery over your finances. I know that there's those that are out there that would tell you in the church, they would tell you that you don't need the tithe. The, you're going to have to understand that within God's kingdom. Now remember, Jesus is the king. 
Every king has a kingdom. Within that kingdom are his subjects. And he is the one that, go, that, that rules and governs over his kingdom. As the king of kings, he, and as the kingdom of God, God has his way of doing things. And one of those ways is, is tithing. Now, let me say this. It is a kingdom mystery. There are various mysteries that are contained within the word of God. There is the mystery of communion. And it's something you're never going to figure out just with ink and paper. It has to be a revelation that God gives you within your heart of understanding that you're not just drinking grape juice and eating a, eating a wafer. You're receiving the miracle meal. It's the same way with many things that have been lost that are kingdom mysteries that a lot of times because church members don't understand them, they don't engage in them. Whether it's communion, you've got some people taking communion twice a year. Oh, they don't understand what they're missing. You have others that don't, that don't understand the mystery of foot washing, which was also laid out in the scriptures. Oh, Pastor Stephen, that's just some kind of symbolic act. You wash somebody's feet and, uh, and then, you know, it's no big deal. No, there's something going on there in the spirit realm. Mm -mm. It's the same way with tithing. It is a kingdom mystery. If you get it, great, because you're catching it by revelation. But you'll have those that don't get it, and they'll argue all day long. That's okay. What they're not understanding is that this is a covenant connection with God financially. See, they're looking at it as some kind of a doctrinal argument. And they can go ahead and argue until the sun goes down. But all the arguers and all of those that would teach against it will one day have to answer to the Lord. It's going to be very, very interesting because they basically told the Lord, I reject that area of covenant. I don't want covenant with you in the area of finances. I'm strong enough to take care of my own financial business. God's like, okay, you can still come to heaven because you put your faith. God's the father's like you put your faith and trust in my son. You can still come to heaven, but you're on your own financially. I hope you are smart. I hope you do have some hustle because you're in it with all the others now. Mm -mm. And if they go down financially, don't be surprised if you go down with them. Woo. Praise the Lord. Mm -mm. This, this is too hot for some, for some a little too hot for some. The truth is a little too hot. Gets, gets hot in the room when you just start ministering the truth because some want to squirm out of it. But one day we will all stand before the Lord. It will answer what we did with his tithe. Praise God. If we gave it to him or if we trusted in our own financial ability and, and spent it on ourselves or used it for some other purpose. Praise God. Again, tithing is a kingdom mystery that gives you mastery over your finances. Tithing and giving of offerings is the way up. Now here's something that's good to understand. It is the commitment to this covenant, not just poking at it every now and then. No, no, no. A commitment to, to the covenant of tithing and giving of offerings that lifts you up. And as you practice the covenant, it keeps you up. Woo. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, it's time for the church to shine. Praise the Lord. Now, as you give to the Lord, you always want to give on the correct spiritual frequency. What do you mean by that? Pastor Stephen? Well, if you work eight hours a day and you check in on a time clock and then you check out later, maybe at five o'clock or six o'clock, whenever it is, and it shows that you worked eight hours, but you know that you fiddled around on the internet while on the clock for three hours, you know that you had a talk with your coworker for an hour and a half and you didn't get any work done because you were talking about the sports event or so whatever it might be. My friends, these are areas that we have to pull this thing together because prosperity is a package deal. Praise the Lord. I had a young man, loved Jesus, working in my sound booth one time. Pastor Stephen, praise the Lord. I mean, he had all the words down and stuff like that. He had the exterior hustle. But there, these interior things must also be right. I remember I did a live meeting one time and I was streaming it and uh, it seemed like there were all, all kinds of streaming problems and weird stuff going on. And, uh, but he, he would, he would tell me, I, everything's okay. Pastor Stephen, I got it under control. I, I've got an eye on it. 
Well, after the service was over and everybody left, I went back to the, to the master computer and I pulled up the entire search history and history on the computer of what had been taking place that night. And it should show the live streaming events and it should pull that stuff up and it showed that, but it had a whole bunch of other stuff all next to it. Oh, now pastor Stephen, you shouldn't look into somebody's history. That equipment belongs to the Lord. And I, and since I, I'm the overseer of this house and of this ministry. You better believe I'm going to go look on the computers because the computers belong to the church. <laughs> they belong to the ministry. I'll look at every single thing. I'll go through every single file if I want to. And that's what I did. And I found out for about three or four hours straight, all he was doing was surfing all over the internet. And when there was, you know, some problems with streams or people were having uh, certain issues, he's over here shopping for stuff. And uh, looking at all kinds of other weird stuff. And, and he's getting paid. And so I'm paying him to do a job. And he's not doing the job. Now, he says he is, but he's not. Oh, now, there are some Christians that are a little bit smarter. They know how to erase their history. But you know what? You can't outsmart God. You maybe think you outsmarted your employer where you clocked for eight hours. You're going to get paid for eight hours. But you know you only worked for maybe four, maybe five, and the rest was just, you got to do, you got to bake your own stuff into, you know, your work. And so you're robbing from the company, you're defrauding your boss, and then you're, and then you're saying, God, bless me with the overflow. <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? We have to pull these things together because you must have a spiritual root, a spiritual root in order to access your financial inheritance. This is not robotic. I give the tithe and I give the offering and God rains it down on me. He rains it down. He rains down the blessing. Well, that is necessary for the covenant to be engaged, but you still have to walk with the Lord in a way that honors him and represents you as a kingdom ambassador, wherever you're at. Now we see this, of course, in the book of Malachi chapter three, and let's go to verse two. But who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears? He is like a refiner's fire and like launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi. And purge them as gold and silver. That's you and me. That's the purging work of the Holy Spirit. Why? That they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Lord, here's my offering. And the Lord's like, that's, that's good. We have an issue over here with you stealing on the time clock. We have an issue over here with what you're looking at on the internet that your eyes should never be beholding. And there's these things that need to be fixed. Why? That they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then, when there's righteousness established, then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord, as in the days of old, as in former years. Praise God. That's why I say you must have a spiritual root in order to access your financial inheritance. Yes, be a covenant practitioner and honor God with the way that you live your life. Look what the Apostle Paul said in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 20, and let's drop down to verse 32. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Not all those who are living like a bunch of rats, not all those who say, I love the Lord yet do not do the works of the Lord. Mm -mm. Seems like we have a lot of that going on today and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. In other words, you have no inheritance unless you are committed to sanctification, living a life that's pleasing to the Lord as a lifestyle. Mm, mm, mm. Woo, praise the Lord. Back to the book of Malachi very quickly. Malachi chapter 3. This is not our message. This is just the tithe and offering 
uh, portion that I need to share with you so that you have faith for your finances. You never become, never become robotic or mechanical. You need to know why you do what you do because this is covenant. This is covenant. This is not just something we do. This is covenant. Praise the Lord. Malachi chapter three, verse 17. They shall be mine says the Lord of hosts on the day that I make them my jewels. Please hear these prophetic words today. We are in that day. Listen to me today. We are in that day right now where God is reaching down into the church, reaching to his people, looking at you. And he's wanting to raise those up that he says, these are my jewels. I designate them as financial champions in the earth within my house. Let them shine bright for me. I'm telling you, God is moving. This is the golden era of the church. This is the era of world evangelism. This is the era of the power of the Holy Spirit rushing upon God's people. It's only going to get stronger and stronger, brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Mm -mm. They shall be mine, says the Lord of hosts, on the day that I make them my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Verse 18, then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked between the one who serves God and the one who does not serve him. Pastor Stephen, I don't think I want to tithe. No, go ahead and do your thing. Do your thing. As you've noticed, the bills are already getting paid. This is not some kind of thing where this is God needs us all to tithe so that God can get his kingdom uh, uh, initiatives taken care of. This is not for God. God rules from heaven where the streets are gold and palaces are made out of the most splendid and luxurious materials. And God is able to take care of his people on the earth. This is not something for God's benefit, or this is not something that we do even from a church or ministry perspective so that, you know, I can keep the lights on and every now and then get the carpet changed out. No, this is for your benefit. This is for your benefit. Either you want to be a, a man or a woman of covenant, or you want to go do your own thing. Praise God. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. Mm, mm, mm. Pastor Steve, my woke pastor told me that I don't need the tithe. He's probably going to tell you a lot of other stuff too, coming down the pipeline. Just hang on. Just hang on. He's going to probably tell you next that, uh, you know, it no longer has to be Adam and Eve. Now it can be Adam and Steve. Watch, watch, because when there's a breakdown, watch what comes next. When you get away from sound biblical theology and doctrine that has been established in the church, going back for centuries to the formation and the foundation of the church on the day of Pentecost, you start getting away from that. Watch what else weird and bizarre starts floating down the pipeline. Praise God. I'm telling you, we're in a time where if you will honor the Lord and give him your best, serve him and be obedient, God will lift you up as a jewel and he'll show you off as a jewel in his crown on the day that I make them my jewels. We're in that day right now. The Lord is wanting to lift you and raise you up. Set yourself apart for the Lord. Be a man, a woman of covenant. The Lord says that the tithe belongs to him. Give it to him. Hallelujah. It's his anyhow. Whether a person gives it or keeps it, it's still his. But the blessing and the, these crown jewels that God is releasing, those only go to those that are covenant. And there's coming shakings and there's coming other things. Well, you're going to very easily find out those who practice covenant and those who don't. And you may have those that don't look like they're doing okay. Things are, are going to uh, be turning, shifting, changing. This is why we must be covenant people. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands and say, Father, I am a covenant man. I am a covenant woman. And I walk with you in covenant I give your tithe to you. Now, Father, we give you praise in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, that you are preserving your people from any, not only harm, 
but also any financial harm. I thank you that they are preserved and kept safe. And not only that, they will even increase, even if there were economic famine, you can increase your people and prosper them exponentially because the covenant never fails. Now, Father, we thank you in Jesus name. As we give now, we say, amen. Praise the Lord. For those of you that prefer to mail your tithe and offering in, please send it to Stephen Brooks International, P.O. Box 717, Moravian Falls, North Carolina. Our zip code here is 28654. For those that prefer to do it electronically online, please go to the ministry website, stephenbrooks.org. There's a link on the homepage. It has a red heart on it. It says give. You can go right there and bring the tithe into the storehouse. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, also, if you would like to give an offering and sow seed, you can do so by clicking on the orange banner that says projects. You see the various projects that we are working on even right now. And your giving into the word towards those is greatly appreciated. Praise God. Remember, covenant is for our benefit. Why, why did this covenant thing go throughout the earth? Why do tribes make covenant? Why do nation states make covenant with, with each other? Why is there a NATO where nations come into an alignment and agreement together so they can be stronger? Well, then why would God make covenant with us? What's up with that? Because he's strong and we need him. We need him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory, glory to God. That's why nations make covenant because that nation, they've got armory. They have we weaponry. This nation over here, they have something else. It could be a uh, high tech or industrial uh, producing ability. So they say, Hey, let's come together. And if anybody attacks me, that means they're attacking all of us. They're attacking you too. Yep. It's a covenant deal. Praise God. And when you're in covenant with God, God shields you and protects you. Praise the Lord. Father, I speak over your people. They are blessed. Shalom. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. In Jesus' name, their lives are whole. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Many of you, God is going to accelerate your coming out of debt. You're coming out of debt. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is positioning you not only in freedom, but to be in leadership to bring others out as well. Praise the Lord. We have a lot of people in politics that say we know how to run things. Really? If you do, let's check your life and let's check your finances and let's see if you're running things good. Because if you can't govern your own life, how can you govern a state or a nation? The truth is you can't. You're not qualified. Praise God. So God is shaping, forming, and developing his people so that you represent him as one of his crown jewels. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, today I would like for us to go to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And I want to talk about a subject that will be very, very helpful to you. You might smile a little bit. You might cringe a little bit. You might laugh a little bit. I don't know. You might even cry a little bit. But I know one thing. This teaching today will get you up and get you going. Okay? So let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we go into your word, let your Holy Spirit flow with understanding. I thank you, Father God, that you are unveiling biblical truths which are kingdom concepts of how we can live and how we can soar and fly. We thank you that you're moving today by your spirit and we are moving with him. We give you praise. Thank you in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Now again, let's take our Bibles and go to Ephesians chapter six. Let's go over the verse 10. Verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of of his might put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the wiles, the W I L E S or the strategies or the diabolical planning, the spiritual mapping out of the devil of how to take you out or how to 
frustrate or humiliate or whatever the case might be. He's very, very good at his job, but he cannot get through to the full armored man or woman of God. So today there's going to be some armory put on, praise the Lord, so that you can stand against all these crazy strategies of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. The more time you spend with the Lord and the more time you pray, the more you realize that statement is so tremendously true. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. This really is a spiritual battle. And you have two kingdoms. You have the kingdom of light and you have the kingdom of darkness. You have the kingdom of God's son, those who have put their faith and trust in him. And then you have all the others that are in the kingdom of darkness. And those in darkness may be very nice people. Maybe they don't even curse or use profanity. But if they do not know Christ as their Lord and Savior, they are under, however, the control of the dark forces. That doesn't mean they go out with axes and start trying to, you know, cut somebody. That doesn't mean they go out with a gun and start, try to start shooting a whole bunch of people down. You can be a very, very nice atheist. You can be a very, very nice uh, uh, adulterer. You could be a very calm, nice, and uh, buy Girl Scout cookies, uh, you know, uh, liar, you know, whatever the case might be. But the bottom line is, if you don't know Christ, you are in the kingdom of darkness, and you are subjected to, number one, the dominion of sin, because when you're not born again, you have a sin nature. You are in a position of being spiritually dead. You're physically alive, but your spirit is dead. And therefore, you, you, might, you might even have relatives that are not saved, and you think, oh, they're so nice, and we're blood-related. Yeah, maybe they are nice. And yes, yes, if they're your relative, you're related by blood. But if they don't know Jesus... Uh, uh, it, it's very, very interesting what can happen in certain atmospheres and, and in certain places where restraint is suddenly pulled back. You're like, and suddenly you're like, wow, <laughs> didn't know that was in them. That's because of the kingdom that they belong to. Praise the Lord. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Verse 13, therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand therefore having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Praise the Lord to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. These fiery darts, there's something else. I tell you what, there's a place where if you don't know how to deal with it, it seems like these things can come through. I'm not talking like every minute, maybe like every 10 seconds. And oftentimes these darts or these arrows of the wicked one, it, uh, they are arrows of wrong thoughts, like a bad thought or a negative thought or an impure thought or whatever it might be. And he, the enemy shoots these arrows toward your mind, towards your spiritual mind. Now, again, we are told here, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praise the Lord. Now, what happens when the enemy is shooting these arrows at you and unfortunately they're getting through? What happens when these arrows are being shot at you. And you know, it's not like you're going to say, Oh, I forsake the Lord. No, no, that's not going to happen. It's not so much 
you know, like a major, like breaking away from God or something like that. It's more of what I would call a harassment where let's say you're wanting to study your Bible and you just, all you want to do is sit down and peacefully read your Bible or read a good Christian book. And, but you can't, why stuff's being shot at you. Maybe you want to pray. Maybe you want to kneel down and have a wonderful time with God and you get still physically and you kneel down to pray, but you can't because your mind is being bombarded and you think, well, I just, I'm having all kinds of thoughts and you don't realize you're being shot at. Mm, praise the Lord. So if we don't deal with this, it will weaken you, weaken you, weaken you. And if left, uh, left alone, yes, it could be a place where there's like major repercussions, like a backsliding or something like that. But we're going to get all that fixed today. Praise God. So these arrows, if they're getting through, they weaken you. And if there is a sustained barrage and you don't deal with it properly, you'll begin to lose the presence of the Lord because your mind is not on the Lord, although you want it to be. And you, you need, you know that it needs to be, it's being pulled by something stronger by something else. And that's the result of those arrows. It reminds me of what one of our tour guides explained to us while we were on tour in Israel one time in the northern area of Israel, known as the Golan Heights. And in 1967, during the Six Day War, Israel won that territory back under the banner of Israel Territory. It's back. They finally got it back. And before that, before they captured that, that area of the Golan Heights, what would happen to the Israeli farmers is that they would be out there trying to cultivate their fields, just like an old, like, like an Israeli man with a hoe. And all he's trying to do is hoe his garden. Yet there's a Syrian up there with a rifle, just shooting down. And they had the high spot. They had the high places and they're just shooting down. And sometimes they, they would kill some Israelis, but the main thing that they were wanting to do is just terrorize them and shoot and harass and frustrate and basically do what? Stop the work. So when these bullets are flying, you know, the farmer's got to put away his equipment, stop and go hide in a house or a shed somewhere so that he doesn't get killed. But of course, like I said, Israel took that property in the six day war and they will never ever give it up because they know they can't without that strategic high place they could be easily, they could easily be, be taken. They need that. They they're very, very small country, but my friends, you have to stop the harassment of the arrows that are being shot at you. Praise God. The reason that arrows of the wicked one get through is because the child of God is not walking in the spirit as they should. They have somehow lowered that. And now they're walking in the flesh and in some ways they're putting up with it. Maybe they think they can handle it, <laughs> but it robs a believer of their joy. And it also, like I said, robs them of the presence of the Lord. It makes it very, very hard to pray. Even if they sit down in a chair and tried to pray in a quiet place, still, they still can't do it because now they're at a low spot. That's the result of the bombardment. Now they're at a low spot and they're suppressed and the enemy does not want to see you get the lift off that you so desperately desire. And of course that you desperately need praise God. So I want to talk about getting out of that place where you're pinned down. Hallelujah. Now, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hmm. There is some practices that you can do. I want to talk about this today. I want to talk with you about what works for me. And I've proven it over the years. And I found out as I got into it, that this is also what the great mystic saints did. They did the same thing. And you might be thinking, well, Pastor Stephen, uh, hold on a minute. What is a mystic saint? I'll just give you a very brief example. Here's my layman's example. They are men or women of God that had a tremendous walk with God that even though they have passed away 
and it's been years since they went to heaven, their books, their materials, and their life are still read and studied. And that's that, that they were mystic saints. They had, they had areas of their life where they had so much of God in their life, it was like there was elements of mystery in their life because you could see Christ so clearly in them. And of course, sometimes people would wonder, well, what are they doing? How are they working uh, these works and having this type of a walk? Praise God. Look, anytime you're reading a book by a man or a woman of God that was written 300 years ago, 400 years ago, there's a reason those materials are still in print. There's many, many good ministers. They finished their course. They accomplished what their assignment was per se. But when, when it's done, it's a wrap. They're gone. They're in heaven. Praise God. And then the ministry just phases out, closes out. And that's it. Uh, any materials or books, they just fade away, so to speak. But some of these people wrote things out of their deep relationship with God, it, that, that spiritual content is still nourishing people today, just as if that saint were still alive because their books or their writings are still around. Praise God. So there's a reason they're still here. So I want to talk about what they did. It's, in, it's what I ended up doing also. And then I found out later that they did, they would do the same thing. My friends, when you're being shot at and you feel you don't feel very spiritual. You don't even, let's, let's say it like this. Maybe you don't even want to pray. You know, you need to pray, but it's like, you can't somehow prime the pump and get it going. Okay. I want to tell you what to do. I'm going to show you how to get out of the flesh and get back into the spirit. All you need to do is take some alone time and you need to go sit down. Now, if it helps, if it helps, Lay down, but I'm not talking about lay down, like put your head on a pillow and just, you know, pull the covers up. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about maybe leaning back on a couch. Okay. I'm not, I'm not talking about something rigid and stiff where you're so physically uncomfortable that you can't even focus. <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about. And at the same time, I'm not talking about something that's so comfortable that, you know, the next thing you know, you fall fallen asleep, but I do want you to get comfortable. And I, I want you to be able to sit there comfortably and this will also help if the only time that you can do it is during the daytime. You, you sometimes need to do something about all the light because if the light's coming in and if it's a beautiful day outside, there's a part of your flesh that says, yeah, I want to get out there and just soak up the sunshine. You know, you want to get out and just do something, anything, you know, uh, start a garden or just, you know, do something. So you have to do something where you can merge in a little bit more without your attention being distracted. And sometimes I'll turn the lights off and close all doors. And if there's a shade, pull the, pull the shade down on the window, not because I want something dark or something like that. I just want it where I can have a little bit more of what I would call an atmosphere of, of uh, no distractions. Okay, I'm going to turn my phone off. For some of you, that could be a great challenge. But I'm going to turn my phone off, or at least I'm going to turn the volume down, and I'm going to just try to get real steel. Now, of course, for those of you that I'm talking about, when the arrows have been getting, getting through, you're going to sit there, and all this stuff is still going through your head. Okay. Maybe things that are troubling you, maybe even things that are discouraging you, maybe things that have even de uh, depressed you, or maybe something that was said to you or about you that's upset you or a situation, you know, that happened and it's upset you. Okay. All that stuff is still turning on the inside of you, but this is what I want you to do. I want you to just sit down in your comfy spot, in your little quiet spot. And situate your room also where somebody just can't blast and open the door and walk in on you. Okay. If you can't lock a door, here's your solution. It's called a prayer cloth. Okay. Go out, get a prayer cloth, uh, buy one online, uh, and you could just pull it over your head. That way, if somebody did walk in, you still have that sense of, of secrecy with God, the, of privacy with God. But um, there's something about me when I'm praying and I'm really over in the spirit with the Lord. I don't ever want somebody just to blast into that because it, it jolts me because I'm totally. Uh, uh, and so often what will happen also, if there is a scenario like that, that I can't control, but I really need to pray. I can't even, I can't even list the times the Holy spirit 
would help bring my prayer time to a close. He just he wraps it up real quick and sometimes even tells me, that's it for now. Somebody is about to come in or, the, or something's going to happen now that's going to interrupt you. I've had that happen so many times I couldn't even begin to write them all out over and over and over and over. But ideally, if you can, you want to position yourself where somebody just can't yank the door open and, you know, blast in on you when you're trying to have a, a time of leaning in. Woo, praise God. All right. Okay, so now you're set. Now you're sitting in your place. You're troubled. Okay, we understand that. The arrows have been shot. Okay, and, but, you're, but you're sitting there. Okay, and you, you've done the best you could to get some, uh, an element of privacy. Praise God. I also use one of those little sound machines. I can turn it on and you know, it makes the different kinds of sounds, white noise, brown noise for me. And also for Kelly, my wife, we, we each like the brown noise. It blocks out. It creates like an ambient sound that blocks out sirens, horns honking, the, the guy on the motorcycle that thinks he's great because he can rev his motorcycle up louder than, you know, there's always somebody like that. So I turn on the sound machine. And it makes that nice uh, brown noise that blocks out all of that other stuff, okay? And if you don't have that, that that's okay. But utilize those if those are available. Now, you're still sitting there. What do you do? You start praying in tongues. You start praying in the Spirit. Verse 17, I take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying always with all prayer. Praying always. Now have your Bible, have your sword next to you. Okay. That doesn't mean we're going to have a Bible study, but always have your sword close by in case God wants to show you something. A Holy Spirit stirring up a verse and you need to look it up. Okay. Don't look it up on your iPad or your phone. Just go ahead and look, look it up in the Bible. Praise the Lord. The way we've been doing it, you know, for the last thousands of years. Praying, all, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So prayer, supplication in the Spirit. Now, what you will find is that as you sit there and you start praying in the Spirit like this, you may be thinking, I'm still mad at what so-and-so told me. But keep on praying. Yes, and you you may have be, you may be having problems with your flesh because all the arrows have been shot with you, and maybe your flesh wa wants to go grab a six pack of beer. Okay, okay, just keep, just sit there. I know all that's floating around. Just sit there and keep praying in the spirit. Yes, and what will happen is that all these things that are troubling you are going to start to float up, and the Holy Spirit is the divine filter. Now this is very, very important. I actually heard a minister one time say, oh, I can watch any kind of movie because I just forget about it later. It doesn't bother me at all. It doesn't matter what I watch, rated R, you know, nudity or whatever. That doesn't bother me because I just forget about it after the movie's over. <laughs> I thought, what an absolutely stupid statement. What takes place is while you sit there, and you begin to pray in the Spirit. Now, maybe not in the first five minutes or the first ten minutes, but very soon, everything floating around, troubling you, bugging you, and even things you're not even aware of that are subconscious, it all starts coming up, and the Holy Spirit starts to filter it out with the blood of Christ. And He'll remind you of that image that you saw in the movie, which you never should have been watching in the first place. Why? Because you have to deal with that. There is no sweeping things underneath the rug with God. If you want to, you can, but you're going to be living in a fantasy world, okay? Because it doesn't work like that. That's why prayers don't get answered, and that's why the breakthroughs don't come. When the Holy Spirit brings these things up, let Him bring them up and talk with Him about it. Say, oh, yeah, Lord, that does trouble me, that image. I wish I never would have seen that. Okay, let's get that dealt with with the blood of Jesus, okay? Repent of, of that and, you know, make a determination not to look at trash and garbage, <laughs> okay, and things like that. But all this stuff starts floating up. And it's not meant to distract you from prayer. It's just that this is all undealt with stuff. The thing that your family member did to you that was so rude or the thing that was done to you at work that was so unfair or unjust. All that stuff floating around. Holy Spirit brings it up and you pray on it until it's dealt with. And this is what you're going to have to do. Pastor Stephen, I tried that. It didn't work. 
it won't work until you keep sitting there and keep praying until the peace starts coming in. And I've had people tell me it didn't work. All they're telling me is they didn't sit there long enough and keep praying in the spirit. And they did it for 12 minutes. So I thought that was going to fix all these problems and mega, like megalithic problems they're dealing with. They think a 12 minute session is going to fix that. It's not a chance in the world that's going to fix that. You have to just sit there and keep praying in the spirit. Lean over and put your hand, your head in your, in your hand. And just if that makes you more comfortable, your mind may be thinking, you might be thinking about a hundred different things or something that's bugging you. Just keep praying, keep praying. Pastor Stephen, you mean like as long as an hour? Yes. If you've had a lot of arrows shot at you, yeah, you, you might not get that sensation of that beautiful peace until you get it around maybe an hour and 30 minutes. Praise God. Amen. And you may have to go a little bit longer if you've, if you've seen something traumatic, okay, or something happened during that day that was really, whoa, whoo, okay. Don't, don't try to, quote, shake it. No, deal with it in these types of times. I'm telling you, the, the enemy is very, very incredibly good at shooting arrows when you're in the flesh and you can have an entourage of bodyguards. I'm talking about real strong men walk around you with a machine gun, to try to protect you. Uh, but I'm telling you in the spirit realm, the devil can, sh he can shoot from the top. He can shoot in between them. He could shoot like you wouldn't believe. And if you're walking in the flesh, you're going to live in these areas of frustration continually. So you, you have to know how to get into the spirit. So you sit there and you just keep praying. And just keep praying and praying. And when I say praying, I'm not talking about, uh, you know, like you're beseeching God for this or that, you know, no, you're praying. And I would call it contemplative prayer because the Holy Spirit's bringing things up so that you can contemplate that. In other words, think about it, talk it over with God and get it dealt with. Praise God. Hallelujah. Maybe somebody that did you wrong. Okay. That comes up. Okay. Well, you have to pray and you have to forgive that person. Praise God. And you have to be able to go on and pray and just pray that, but just keep praying in the spirit and it'll break. And I, and I can't tell you when it will, it might break at 50 minutes It might break at an hour, 20 minutes. If you're stuck full of all kinds of arrows and quivers, you might have to go two hours. But I'm telling you, if you do, there will come a time of supernatural relief where all these troubling thoughts, they just, they, they just won't, they just, they're gone. Yes, you can actually live like that in peace. All that stuff, all of those voices, all of that noise, and I'm not saying you're hearing voices, that's not what I'm saying. But all these arrows of things that would trouble you, disturb you, upset you, these thoughts that you don't even want even, I mean, it's possible to hear a song, a worldly song that you can hear these secular songs and you listen to them. And oftentimes Christians don't know the song is laced with demons. And you hear that, you hear that song that has some twisted verbiage or words in it. And it sticks in your mind. That's because Satan gives many of these famous uh, worldly musicians lyrics that have that uh, those that write music, they know it's called a hook. A hook is a rhythm that just, it sounds really, really good. And you'll never have a record or, or an, excuse me, a song that sells really well, unless it has a hook in it. And it's that hook. If you listen to that, yeah, you can get hooked and it's in. And so you'll be trying to pray. And that stupid song is coming up that, that, that group would sing. Okay, I'm telling you, you can knock all of that out if you just sit there, keep on praying, keep on praying. Now, what will happen? What will happen? It may take an hour, maybe an hour and 10 minutes. And suddenly you, you'll feel the, the strength of the Holy Spirit. You'll feel the anointing start to come in. When that happens, you've got it. Don't stop. Don't, don't stand up and say, praise God. Oh, whoo, isn't the Holy Spirit a good psychologist? No, 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 no. Sit back down. And keep praying. And now, now get filled up. Because you're just now at the place of neutral. Okay? You've been negative. You have finally hit neutral. Don't leave. Now stay and get filled up. What's going on? Now you have more freedom. 
Now, a lot of these crazy thoughts, they've, they've gotten like burned off. They've gotten burned off. Hallelujah. And they've gotten all filtered out, and that stuff is gone. And what's actually taking place now? You're finally now achieving spiritual liftoff. You're moving out of the flesh, and you're moving into the Spirit. And now you're touching the life of the Spirit. So go ahead and get filled up with the Lord's goodness and presence. Praise God. Now, prayer generates creativity. Creativity begins to flow, and as you're in that realm, suddenly you start getting ideas of how you can do things better with your, with your business, or your job, or your work, oh, or how you could fix that problem that you couldn't figure out before, and you could see it so clearly. So this anointing in prayer now is now working for you, not to just defend you and build you up. It's now working in the area of creativity, and of course, prayer is also the driving force for the anointing. And now you have creativity working and the anointing working, which is strength. And you start to think now with the mind of Christ, where his mind begins to think through you. It's like you start, it's like you step into Jesus, but somehow it's like Jesus also steps into you. Praise God. Mm -mm. Glory, glory to God. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Well, not, not the person that is just in the flesh all the time and willing to just tolerate it and live in it. No. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Now, that is the position where God sees you at. But you have, to, you have to apply yourself to step into the reality of that position. Or, if not, you can walk around with arrows stuck in you all the time. Now, of course, in the physical, you don't see any arrows. But in the spirit realm, yeah, you're going to have them stuck. Preferably, they're stuck on your shield of faith. <laughs> right? That's also what's going up with your prayer. You're getting the spirit. The shield goes up. But if you don't have that, you have, they're stuck in you. And that's not where they're supposed to be. Hmm. Wow. And yes, those arrows do make a lot of people sick. They make a lot of Christians sick. They, they can be a source of various illnesses, sicknesses, and even diseases. Praise God. Praise God. Glory. But my friends, stay in your place until you're filled up. You notice that flow will come. When that flow is there, that's the anointing. Stay there till you're filled up. And of course, now, again, in that anointing, you start thinking creative thoughts. And these are good thoughts. You're like, thank God I'm not thinking about that other stuff anymore. Yes, thank God. Thank God. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is working in your life. But, my friends, these are things we must do. Now, if you're a baby Christian, we can pray for you. And since you don't know how to change your diaper or grow out of your diaper at that phase, because that's what infants do, then we can pray for you. And we can help put a shield of protection around you. But there's a place spiritually where you reach spiritual accountability where we cannot carry you anymore. And while we will pray for you, that does not exempt you from doing your own praying. Mm, 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 mm. Praise God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now let's go to Isaiah chapter 11. Glory. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeshu ba 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 sa. Sometimes people they're they're wanting to ask God, God, I want to know why you're not moving in my life. Then you get over in the spirit and you find out uh, that's really a stupid question. That's actually the wrong question. I'm telling you, everything changes. The narrative changes when you get over in the spirit. You get over in the spirit and then you're like, God, you are moving. What's going on? Now your shield of faith is up. Hallelujah. Instead of woe is me, I am bypassing my birthday party to have a self-pity party instead. No, no. When you get back into the spirit in faith, you're not even making the same prayer request. 
You're not even asking God, oh, God, why did you fail me? Oh, get in the spirit. You realize God hasn't failed you at all. Hallelujah. You just got in the flesh. Praise the Lord. So we have to get in the spirit. It affects the way we see things. It affects the way we pray, affects the way we believe and the way we talk. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 11 verse one, there shall, there shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Here we have the sevenfold ministry of the Holy spirit. And trust me, if Jesus needed the Holy spirit, in him to do the things he did and to, you know, walk the walk that he walked, then you and I need the same Holy Spirit. And the anointing that is generated through prayer is what releases these various manifestations of the Spirit, and there's seven. That, remember, there's not seven Holy Spirits. There's one Holy Spirit, but he has seven distinct attributes, praise God. The Spirit of the Lord, number one, the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom, and the Spirit of understanding, the Spirit of counsel, and might, the Spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. There's seven right there. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. His delight is in the fear of the Lord. The King James Version, which is also a correct translation in this area, says that he is made of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. You know, I've been in countless meetings, and in most meetings, because I try to only go to the meetings where I can, I know I'm going to have liberty and freedom, okay? If I'm going to hold a meeting or I'm going to go speak somewhere, I want to go where the relationship that I have with the Holy Spirit is celebrated, not something that just tolerate, you know, tolerate it, you know, the people don't really want it, but maybe they just, they want to hear the story. No, I'm going to go where the Holy Spirit is not shoved into a corner, but he is allowed to do his work. Remember where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, praise God. But there have been times where I have been asked to minister and I, I felt to go ahead and go because there would be those watching that could be touched. But sometimes uh, even the leaders themselves, they can't pick up on anything. And I'm talking about spirit filled leaders. They can't pick up on anything. Why? They're not in the spirit. Are they administrative? Yes. Are they professional in the way that they uh, carry out what they supposed to, uh, sp are supposed to do? Yes. Can they get in the spirit? No, they, they, they could if they wanted to, but they're, they're bogged down in the mud, but they've become professional ministers so they can fake it a lot of the times until it's Holy Spirit time. See, ministers can get very, very good at preaching and teaching, and you can get good at just talking. But moving with the Holy Spirit, also in your preaching and teaching to talk about what He wants to inject or lead the preaching towards or in a, in a, you know, to say certain things, or to move along the line of the Holy Spirit with the gifts of the Spirit, that's a whole new, that's a whole different matter right there. Praise God. And that's why you must be in a place of being uh, where you're, you're in flight. You, you not only have lifted off, you're in flight. Because if you're not in flight, you can't lift, up, you can't lift others up. You can even say the right words, but the anointing's not there. And the anointing is what makes all the difference. Praise God. His delight is in the fear of the Lord. The word delight in the Hebrew, the original Hebrew means to, uh, it means to breathe in and out through the nose and to smell. You're picking up smell by what you are detecting with your nose. And so often in meetings, I'll begin to smell things in the spirit. That's what that's talking about right here. I'll begin to smell all kinds of things and I'll have, uh, you know, ministers sitting next to me and uh, some will say, oh, wow, Pastor Steve, that's amazing. I'm getting it. Others Others are like, hmm, nothing happened over here. Hmm, nothing, nothing happened over here. And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm sure there's not. I'm sure there's not. Not because we're more spiritual, but it's just because you're showing up and you're just not, you're not ready for anything. You're not ready. Praise God. Look, when, when the refiner comes and Messiah has come, he comes to purify the sons of Levi. And that's through heat. 
And a lot of people cry, God send revival. Lord, let your Holy Spirit come into this house. Well, what do you do when he comes and he starts burning things up? Burning the flesh out. I talked to an associate pastor, the executive assistant, to the senior pastor. And the senior pastor was going out of town. And the assistant was going to preach in his place. And it's uh, Sunday morning and he's going to preach. And I, I happened to go to that church because I was going to be ministering that night. So I went that morning and I asked the pastor, the associate that was going to preach that morning. I said, what'd you do last night? Did you have a nice night? Nice day yesterday? He said, yeah, yeah. He said, Pastor Stephen, I did. He said, last night I went out and saw a uh, so-and-so movie. And he listed, he named one of the most vile, disgusting movies where God's name was profaned over and over and over. The movie had graphic violence, graphic nudity, and that's what he did the night before. And now he's going to stand here in front of thousands of people, and he's going to minister the word of the Lord to them. He's going to minister the anointing to them because he's cloaked with the Holy Spirit. No, he's cloaked with what he got baptized in the night before. Mm -mm. And he didn't get up and have no early morning prayer with God. Nope. He just got up, had his coffee, looked over some notes and off he goes. And then people wonder like, you know, that's a nice message. It, is it just me or did it seem to be dead? <laughs> didn't seem to have any anointing. Uh, that's because you're right. It, it didn't praise the Lord. That's not being critical. That's not being judgmental. That's just saying, Hey, I need, I need life, man. And I can't, I, I can't get up. I can't get unstuck with some of the stuff that you're trying to present to me. Praise the Lord. Look, you have to be in flight if you want to get others up into flight. This is very, very important. More so than we've ever realized. Please, we're, our time is short today. Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. Glory to God. Glory to the Lord. This wouldn't surprise you, but I've actually had people contact my ministry and say, Pastor Stephen, your sermons are too long. Can you imagine them? And, and, but you, you would say they wouldn't, but they would. They would. If the Apostle Paul were here today and he taught all night and expounded the deepest mysteries of God so that everybody could understand them and taught all night long and the church was built up and strengthened, there would be those that say, now, Paul, you need to listen to us. You're teaching too long. <laughs> you know why they say that? Because they can't do that. The, the reason some of them preach for 10 minutes is that's all they can talk about. 10 minutes is as long as they can go and they're toast. They're done. <laughs> that's the truth. They can't go beyond that. They haven't prepared to go anything beyond that. And if you took their notes away, they're finished. They wouldn't know what to do. Praise the Lord. These are the days that we're living in. Mm -mm. Praise God. Glory to Jesus. Now, my friends, I see you achieving liftoff. There's others. Look, you will always find others that don't mind staying stuck in the mud. And if that's what they want to do, uh, that's not God's best. But the thing is, is that you must go on. You must ascend up Mount Zion. And as you go up it, you'll find others all over that have camped at certain elevations. And they think this is it. Stand back. We have all embodiment of truth within our organization or group or denomination. Keep going to the top. That doesn't mean that you don't have a tribe. It doesn't mean that you don't have uh, connections and uh, associations and friendships. I, I have those things. I need those things. But I'm not camping. I'm not camping anywhere. I'm, I'm continuing to moving. Moving on. I'm holding with the truths that I have, and, and I'm never departing. But as far as my walk with the Lord, you must continue to go on. Because here's the, what you need to understand. What happens when you actually get in flight? When you're no longer depressed. When the arrows have all been extracted, and now the, the power of God has charged into you, and now you're up. What do you do now? You must determine to stay up. You must determine that you're not going back down there and rolling around in the mud anymore. Praise God. Okay. You must, you must determine that this now must be the way that I govern my life and that I walk with the Lord. I said 60 verse eight, who are these who fly? 
Not these that roll in the mud. Not these whose, you know, inspiration is looking at a chicken. No. Who are these who fly? I'm talking today the high flyers. Mm -mm. Not excuse makers for why they can't get up. No. I'm talking the high flyers. Do you know the way up now? Do you know the way up? And that's just one. That's one that works for me. That's my go-to. And it's the go-to, by the way, for many that have gone before me in centuries past. It will work for you too. There's other formats. There's other biblical platforms that you can work on also that generate lift. I'm just sharing with you my own personal experience because I can't comment on some other things because I work what works for me. Praise God. But my friends, God wants you to be a high flyer in the spirit Absolutely. Because when you're up, now you can, now you can lift others. Because now you all, if nothing else, now you know how. Now you know how, because it's working for you. Praise the Lord. Woo! Who are these who fly like a cloud and like doves to their roost or their nest? You need to always know where your roost is at. Now, in context here, that's talking about those that are returning to Israel. And sometimes pe people would say, oh, Pastor Stephen, this is talking about uh, the prophet looking out and seeing the white sails and the ships coming, and it looks like a dove. The, the ship with the white sails looks like a dove. No, no, no. That, the, later he gets into the ships in the following verse. And before that, he was talking about the donkeys. So he's talking about different means of travel to go up to the place of God. Zion, praise God. But my friends, you must be a flyer. You can get faster anywhere uh, by flying. You can get faster there than a ship. You get faster there, certainly compared to a donkey or a camel. Flying is the fastest route. And I see many of you going up today and chains breaking today. And the enemy going, oh no. Well, we had a good time while we, while we kept them down. Uh, one got away from us today. But you know, there's plenty more that we can keep down. My friends, when you're up, people can tell it. And they can see your walk with the Lord. They see your strength. They see your composure. They see your calmness. They see you not spazzing out when others are about to lose it. And trust me, that says more than words could ever say. When they see strength inside of you, when others are shattered and fearful, and you stand there completely unshaken in absolute peace, that preaches more to them than you taking an entire Bible that's this thick and preaching the whole thing to them. Praise the Lord. But you cannot demonstrate that unless you've, you are in that flight mode. Who are these who fly like a cloud and like doves to their roost? Fly to your devotional place. Go to meet your God. Get out of the flesh. Get into the spirit. You may, may think, Pastor, I don't even want to pray. I, I understand. Sit there and just start talking in tongues, and something will begin to happen. Because what will happen is all the yucky stuff gets filtered off, burned off, burnt up, and then eventually that lift will become in, start to generate. And that's the Holy Spirit. And then, as we know, keep generating that. Praise God until you are in your respected altitude that is pleasing to the Holy Spirit. Lift your hands today. Father, I pray for those that are watching, anybody that's been grounded, uh, Lord, wherever they might be, I just thank you that you're going to help them to get lifted today, and you will meet them and fill them and empower them. I thank you, Father, for the gravitational pull of the flesh, the gravitational weight of of the arrows and the troubles of life. I thank you, Father God. They are never, ever heavy enough with the booster rockets of the Holy Spirit. And I thank you that your people are even beginning to go up right now. I speak strength over your people. Father, we give you praise. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Some of you are even having visions right now, and God is showing you your great destiny, and that's enough right there to stir up something on the inside of you that says, yes, it's worth fighting for. Praise God. Amen. Father, I bless your people in Jesus name. Amen. And amen.
Praise the Lord. If you're watching today's message, and all of this is new to you, or maybe you've been watching for some time and you feel persuaded that God is true, that His Word is true, and that salvation is only in Christ, today is your day of salvation. I want you right now to pray this prayer after me. And Jesus will save you right now, regardless of where you live, where you're at. You could be on the other side of the world. could be a different time zone, wherever the case might be. Call upon the Lord right now. Pray this prayer. Pray it out loud, and Jesus will save you right where you're at. Say, Jesus, I am a sinner. But you died to save me from my sins. Jesus, today I give my life to you. Jesus, Wash my sins away. Come into my heart. Write my name in your book of life. And I give my life to you completely. Jesus, thank you for saving me. Step into my life today and lead me and guide me from this day forward. In your name I pray. Amen. And he heard that prayer. And may I have the privilege to be the first one to say, Welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the kingdom of light. Welcome to the kingdom of God's dear son. You're now in it. Praise God. And you're up and running. Praise God. And your lifting is assured as you apply these biblical principles. Now, everybody under the sound of my voice that is a believer in Christ Jesus, let's take Holy Communion together. Praise God. Yes, you can take communion right there in the comfort of your home, maybe even traveling, and you have a little uh, travel uh, case of the juice and the bread. Why don't you go ahead and take that out right now? I've got some grape juice here. I have a little wafer right here. I want to encourage you to get the same. This is our juice and our bread, and let's pray over it right now. Father, we bless the juice and the bread. We thank you that we set it apart as holy through this prayer. And we thank you that this is now the body and the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. This is his flesh. This is his blood. Thank you, O oh God. Now, Father, as we receive the Lord's flesh, we thank you for strength. We thank you for strength. We thank you for strength. And I thank you, Father God, that your children your people are putting on their spiritual armor and they're not getting hit up aside the head anymore by the devil. They're putting on that helmet of salvation. Some just put it on just a moment ago in their prayer. I thank you, Father God, the sword of the spirit. Your, the word is always close by in our hearts, in our mouth. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Father. And we receive your lifting word today. And supernatural strength and energy and divine health in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's receive. I'm sure there's a few that you would think, Pastor Stephen, this is too hard. I'm going to find a different preacher who can just uh, help me get it all fixed in five minutes. I have to be honest with you and let you know what works and what doesn't. There's a skinny guy years back I used to know, decades ago, used to come to the gym, work out, and try to do this, and try to do that. And he one day got raw frustrated and said, Stephen, I'm not gaining any weight. I said, yeah, I, I can tell. He said, I'm not gaining any muscle. I said, yeah, I can tell. He goes, why? I said, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you just don't know what you're doing. You don't know how to train. You don't know what you're doing. It won't, and so you can keep coming up, keep doing your stuff. It's not going to work because it's all, it's all goofy. It doesn't work like that. Praise God. Mm -mm, the Holy Spirit is moving. Praise God. Holy Spirit is moving. These are powerful Pentecostal truths. Now, when I say Pentecostal, I'm not trying to say this is what we do in our denomination. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about these are biblical principles and truths that work for any believer that will apply them. Praise God. Praise God. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you, O God. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. It's great cleansing power. Father, we forgive anybody who sinned against us. We thank you that your blood provides forgiveness of our sins and cleansing from all unrighteousness. We thank you, Father, for wisdom, creativity, anointing, carrying that out in joy and in peace. And we thank you, Father, for strength. We thank you for strength so that the enemy can't push us around because of the strength. We thank you, Father, that as we take communion today, that there is oneness with you through Jesus, that we are enjoying oneness. We thank you also that communion enforces the truth that what was not permitted in Jesus is not permitted in us either. Jealousy, envy, lust, hatred, disease, sickness, those things were not found in Him. They were not found in Him. They cannot be found in us either. We thank you for grace upon grace. Thank you, Father, that this cup is more than enough. We thank you that the miracle meal is working right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's receive the Lord's blood. Oh, praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lift your hands. Glory. Some of you, your crown got knocked a little bit sideways through some of the things you've been going through. Go ahead and straighten it up. Get it on there just right. Praise God. Take your place. Seat it with Christ in the heavenly realms. Looking good, looking fresh, and strong in the Lord. God bless you. Thank you for watching today. I look forward to seeing you back next time. Till then, stay blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye-bye.